Terra Preta Sanitation. Part 1 Overview. Hello, my name is Ralf Otterpol. I'm Director of the Institute of Wastewater Management at Hamburg University of Technology. We are presenting Terra Preta Sanitation, and this uh, series of videos is made as a student project by Andreas Svensson. Uh, we hope you get an overview on our work on protecting water and recovering nutrients at the same time. This is based on a completely new toilet uh, system that is part of uh, an integrated sanitation approach that uh, links sanitation and agriculture. In our natural and sustainable environment, we get our drinking water from clean surface waters like rivers and lakes and also groundwater. The groundwater sources are refilled by rain, which is retained by the humus rich soil layer and leaking into the ground. Our food is produced by crops. They are growing well in the fertile soil, which holds much water like a sponge. Due to the nutrients in the humus rich soil, our food is healthy and supplies us with everything we need to survive. After the consumption, almost all nutrients leave our body again in our excretions, feces and urine. But when we are sick, our feces also contain dangerous pathogens. Biological processes by microorganisms living in the soil layer consume and destroy the pathogens. Our droppings are sanitized and transformed to nutritious humus. This way, the nutrients we took out of the soil by harvesting the crops are brought back. They can be used, for example, by trees, which later give back the nutrients to the soil again by dropping leaves, branches or dying off, and so on. After some time, also our crops get access to the nutrients in the soil again and produce our healthy food. The circulation of the nutrients is closed and the fresh water is not affected and stays clean. But the current situation is often different and not sustainable. The nutrient circle is interrupted because we don't give back the nutrient resources to the soil. The soil depletes and the humus layer decreases and so the soil loses much of its water holding capacity. This worsens the conditions for the plants even more. To grow crops on the dry and depleted soil, a lot of irrigation is needed and often artificial fertilizers are used to add nutrients. But despite all the efforts, the yield is much lower than using humus rich and spongy soil. Now that the soil has lost much of its capacity to retain water, Less rain is soaked up into the ground, and so the surface runoff is increased. This brings soil erosion and flooding with it. There is also more evaporation. The groundwater is not refilled anymore and its level sinks. The reduced vegetation as a result of the bad soil even has an effect on the local climate, which accelerates the desertification. These are the effects on agriculture due to the interruption of the nutrient circle. But where do the nutrients go if we don't give them back to the soil and the plants? They go down the toilet, in the true sense of the word. We direct the nutrients into the fresh water, either directly by leaching from pit latrines or leakages in septic tanks into the groundwater sources, or, as a matter of fact, directly into the rivers by outlets. For the transportation of the urine and feces in the sewage system alone, a lot of fresh water is needed and also contaminated by the wastes. Mostly the wastewater is not even treated to reduce the organic material before it is discharged into surface waters. With the nutrients, also the pathogens from our feces are brought into the fresh water. This way, not only the balance of the ecosystem in the river is endangered by the enormous amount of nutrients, but also our own health as we drink the water that contains the pathogens. In this vicious circle, diseases spread. Well, we are dealing with uh, new ways of sanitation to find sanitation systems for those people in the world who don't have adequate sanitation so far. So we are talking about uh, around 2 billion people. One of the most promising uh, uh, developments in sanitation is what we call Terra Preta sanitation. Terra Preta is the black soil, the man-made black soil that has been discovered in the Amazon. And that was made by uh, composting of uh, organic matter but also of uh, excreta uh, in a form of uh, adding some charcoal and some woody material and this has produced a highly fertile soil 
uh, and this is called Terra Preta. Terra Preta sanitation is a system where we collect excreta under lactic acid fermentation to avoid smell and to have a very good sanitization. After collection and the, the transport to a composting site, charcoal is added and composting process uh, leads to large amounts of nutrient-rich uh, composts. Now let's compare the two different systems of dealing with nutrients and water to see how terapeutic sanitation can be implemented. The problematical system of leading nutrients into the fresh water is displayed in red color on the left. The sustainable system of a closed nutrient circle is displayed in green color on the right. In the system on the left, the nutrients from our feces are causing pollution of fresh water. Whereas in the system on the right, they are used for the reproduction of humus soil. The result of the left system is soil depletion, which leads to decreasing agricultural production. The right system improves the soil ensuring the possibility for a long-term, highly productive organic farming. As shown, valuable nutrients are changed into pollution and wastewater by the use of flush toilets and pit latrines. In the campus, all toilets are flush, flush toilets. So flush toilets, if it's not flushed, then it's going to be really bad, eh? and you can't accommodate it. Any shortage in electricity or disruption uh, the pump is not working. Clearly there are uh, shortages, shortages uh, and complaints. The toilets can't get 24 hour water service. I think water is basic for the toilets. We are uh, exposed to bad smells due to lack of water. The social aspects of sanitation are crucial. F one hand is the availability of toilets. It's against human dignity if people don't have good toilets at their disposal. So that's a social discrimination that our world society that uh, has uh, enormous amounts of money available and with a very very tiny fraction of that uh, this whole sanitation problem could be solved in maybe 10 years time. Our societies are simply accepting that 2 billion people in the world are having no toilets at all or nasty toilets that are a danger for public health, children dying from that. People simply don't look at that. <laughs> Just you can see, this is a toilet where eight uh, households are uh, using. In each household, you can you can count more than five to six uh, individuals or people. So uh, more than uh, four to eight people all time using this toilet. It's open. This is surprising. That's, uh, that to see this one as a slab, you know? Just this yeah. slab. Mm. Even if you closely look, you can see for magos. Uh, mm. 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 They, they add ash to control the magot. And, and the, the, the smell. Of, the urine of the, the yeah. cows, yeah. yeah. Concerning this sanitation, we have a sanitation problem here. There is a lake near us which is full of aquatics, especially uh, fish and uh, crocodile. Due to this sanitation problem, automatically uh, everything is going to the lake. Nowadays, the con chemical concentration in, in, in both lakes is very, very, very amazing. Every, every day we are losing our natural resources. Both lakes are now endangered. The polluted water containing pathogens leads to diseases. To compensate the missing nutrients in the soil, artificial fertilizer is used. But it cannot replace natural humus, and so it cannot stop soil depletion. There are evidence that it even worsens the situation. The more the depletion is progressed, the more fertilizer is needed to keep on farming. And so it leads to dependency on the fertilizer. It just delays the symptoms of the nutrient deficiency due to an agriculture which is not sustainable. Traditionally, composting and uh, recycling excreta to the soil was the normal thing to do. So it was the natural thing. However, not always done in a good way, especially with sanitation. Uh, just putting excreta into soil is not a good practice. Then when it was made possible through chemical technology to process nitrogen for 
producing commercial fertilizers, the whole process of composting was sort of overrun by very, very cheap materials that sort of made people lazy, so they didn't care for pros uh, composting anymore, they just bought the fertilizer. Especially in a place where soil depleted area, farmers, uh, they don't have, they, uh, they can't afford to buy fertilizer because it's expensive. The, when are the farmers use artificial fertilizer, all in the years they must depend upon the artificial fertilizer but they make the natural compost the natural compost there is no depend upon that we see a lot of soil degradation that is following this type of chemical agriculture because this can be done for a couple of decades but then the soil is getting worse and worse and worse this uh, chemical especially artificial fertilizer have some impact on the soil. Application of chemical fertilizers and um, also pesticides uh, tends to kill the earthworms and the earth life. Even if uh, increases the production for one year, for one season, the season but there is a problem of, on the soil because this, uh, this chemical content in this uh, artificial uh, fertilizer. Absorption capacity for water is getting less and erosion is uh, getting worse and worse. Already now many many farms go out of operation, the yields are going down. The problem of certain country is, is the decreasing of the production yearly. And so there is a, a movement towards organic agriculture. Uh, the number of farms uh, doing organic agriculture is growing very fast. The rising demand of fertilizer leads directly to rising prices. Both the increasing prices for fertilizers and the farmer's bad health condition culminate in an economical weakening of the farm. This way, these side effects also contribute to a decreasing production. A vicious circle is created, making worse the circumstances. Now, considering all this, how can we convert from the problematical system to the sustainable one? Let's get into the details of Terra Preta sanitation as a sustainable way of sanitation, soil improvement and water protection at the same time. So now, what has to be done to switch from pollution to production? How can we change from soil depletion to soil production? If we want to use a long-lasting, highly fertile terra preta soil instead of producing chemical fertilizers. Basically, two things have to be done. We should get away from common pit latrines or flush toilets and come to terra preta sanitation that is producing soil. In addition, we have to move away from the inefficient burning of wood in normal stoves and go to uh, wood gas stoves that are producing charcoal. Terra Preta sanitation starts with a special collection toilet. The Terra Preta toilet plays the key role in the whole system. Now we want to make sanitation that produces uh, Terra Preta soils and for that we need toilets that are capable of collecting excreta without a lot of dilution. We have now started a development that is based on finding a container toilet that is collecting all the excreta. Now how can such toilets look like? We have found that uh, the camping toilets that are on the market are coming relatively close to what we need. Uh, unfortunately they are still a little bit too small so they are not suitable for sanitation installations inside households. People putting toxic chemicals in there uh, and then they flush. So that's the normal operation. With that we have too much dilution again, so we don't need this flushing. But we can use this type of toilet because uh, it just opens with a little handle. So when we want to use the toilet we can just uh, open this uh, hole here, making this uh, smell free, we add some lactic acid bacteria into the toilet before we use it. The bacteria will convert excreta into something that doesn't smell anymore and uh, where also there is no gas formation. Uh, the material is closed off from 
uh, air. Toilets are always a little bit tricky issue, of course, and it must be re really clean and smell free. Normally there will be very little uh, getting dirty. And when people clean the toilet, they should use uh, a spray bottle or a little shower. And with that, uh, the toilet can be used with very little water. So that we don't have a, a lot of dilution, so that the tanks must not become too big. A good option to find uh, sanitation systems that are comfortable, cheap and uh, also applicable in very many different situations. All in all this process works nicely and now the challenge is to develop a toilet that is larger so that it can hold the excreta for a family for a minimum a week or maybe even a month. At the moment we are developing special toilet systems and these toilets are performing lactic acid fermentation. This process is meant for avoiding smells and to kill pathogens. Now we put uh, excreta into lactic acid fermentation. That is a process where the pH value goes down to around 4 and that is a very very thorough sanitization. Most of the pathogens will be reduced. You have um, orderless handling of the, the excreta and that's important aspect when you apply it into the sanitation pathway, especially as carriers are most uh, <coughs> persistent uh, pathogens which are difficult to eradicate but this system uh, will achieve that as well. We have done experiments with this since uh, well uh, around one and a half years here at the uh, at Hamburg University of Technology and uh, it does work very well. What are the materials need to be added? Uh, normally in uh, fecal matter in human excreta there are uh, no much uh, sugar but this lactic acid fermentation process is based on a sugar, uh, easily degradable sugar source so we need to supplement the process with uh, sh uh, sugar. So what amount of sugar uh, we need to add? So that is one of the things also uh, we were looking at. We have well advanced with this. We know the ins and outs. We have identified uh, three to four uh, lactic acid bacteria species that are ideal for these uh, uh, systems. Without needing extra energy source, it is a natural process. As I said, you, ne you need to add a bit of sugar, but I think that that's easy to, man to manage. After the lactic acid fermentation, we come to composting on a composting site. Uh, for the composting that is similar to normal composting, there is the addition of crushed charcoal and with that we have a, a thermophilic composting that is then converted to vermicomposting. We still have very little composting from sanitation, so excreta is still mostly going into the water cycle. Uh, making a lot of problems there, killing many people through the pathogens that are then in surface waters or in groundwater. And if that can be converted to compost, we can help protecting the water and improving the soil quality at the same time. If people are really using compost, this is give a guarantee for the soil. We uh, try to introduce this compost to the farmers and the farmers do uh, experience it and do it, it and they get a ye high yield because of this compost. Using this waste, feces and urine uh, compared to the uh, to uh, compost, it is very very essential. What we see here is the composting site of the University of Arbemünde, and what you see here is the first compost heap we set up two weeks ago, which is mixed now to. Uh, keep the process going on to uh, improve the aeration and um, untight the structure. It's a Chinese method which is especially also um, suit suitable for composting fe feces um, because it reaches very high temperatures. It's done by mixing uh, organic waste from kitchen or food, food leftovers with uh, grass and some cow dung or human feces. Then the heap is built up with the mixture and in this heap we will stick bamboo sticks which will be taken out after one day 
so there there will be aeration holes and uh, before taking out the heap will be covered with mud to keep its uh, temperature and moisture after two weeks then the heap will be mixed to another one and left for another six weeks and then the composting process is, is finished normally if everything goes well all waste material which is uh, collected from uh, uh, farm residue uh, and uh, house gate uh, residue uh, we can collect which are uh, specially plant uh, biomass parts to uh, enhance the uh, decomposition we put urine plus uh, faces ash and uh, some other uh, soil so uh, we start as a trial here uh, last year uh, i think already this one is uh, by this year it is finished so we went to use uh, as a nursery based uh, fertilizer uh, to have the terra preta you need to put the microorganisms in the jar and a freshly produced jar with high temperature is sterile there is no life in it to have the effect the terra preta effect as soon as possible you need some efficient ways to introduce the microorganisms in the jar and there are some people they are doing different anaerobic biological processing like digestion or lactic acid fermentation and I'm working with composting it's also a very widely used process and I just add some jar in the composting process we have a lot of microorganisms that can fast enter the jar and cultivate it in composting you can keep fresh matter with lower energy value like leaves or grass. Having a toilet using a vermi com worms, worms to compose the fecal matter. Uh, there are uh, good results especially uh, with respect to um, transforming it to humus but uh, one of the challenges is uh, the odor problem uh, from the toilet. That's, that's why we are using vermi composting as a further stabilizing phase because it is it ha it's also found to be efficient in um, hygienizing the fecal matter, even vermicomposting alone, combined with the lactic acid fermentation, uh, which we expect uh, will reduce most of the pathogens at the source in the toilet. So using uh, the lactic acid fermentation in the toilet and then using the worms later uh, will have uh, <coughs> definitely a beneficial effect based on the result of the vermicomposting. So the necessary charcoal can be produced easily in wood gas stoves where Charcoal is a byproduct of highly efficient cooking. We have started working with groups that deal with wood gas technology. So that is a, a type of stove that is not burning the wood, but it's gasifying the wood so that uh, after the cooking there is charcoal. And this charcoal is ideal for our type of uh, terra preta compost. So we link up with the people dealing with renewable energy. You just need the right temperature and uh, an anaerobic conditions and then you can turn with or without water everything, every biomass in biochar. If you start charring wood or other biomass in pyrolysis process, uh, there, is, um, there are generated a lot of pyrolysis gases. See that you have a perfect ignition and uh, all the gases are burned. This can be done by stoves. The point is here in this stove that you have actually anaerobic conditions. And the great advantage is that you make a gasification, you get the pyrolysis gas out of it and you burn the gas in the upper part of the stove. And uh, here you have a very clean uh, burning and then you have the nice residual which could be produced because in the lower part of the stove it was anaerobic conditions. Actually everywhere in the world where you have some woody material you can do it, you have small amounts. Wood is pure product so you will also get uh, more or less pure uh, carbon. But, uh, you need to have some use for the heat because always when you're doing pyrolysis process uh, you have some uh, excess heat and this you should be used for cooking or for some industrial or other process where you just need the heat. So if you have there a nice burning, a nice fuel from wood um, then you can use the heat and have still the char that you can use on the fields afterwards. Finally, the product of the composting process is terra preta soil, which is highly fertile and can be used as a soil conditioner. To make 100% sure that there are no pathogens left, the fresh terra preta soil should first be used for non-food crop plants 
or necessary reforestation purposes. After a few years, it will be absolutely safe to use it for food crops. This measure is another part of the multi-barrier system guaranteeing a complete sanitization. Now let's come to the final conclusions and perspectives. This uh, Terra Preta system is, as I said, it is based on EcoSan system and um, <coughs> it transforms excreta to humus. And But when we see the ecological sanitation approach established so far, um, it's, uh, there are no uh, proper pathways for treatment and up further application of excreta. The, sometimes there is odor problem in most of the systems. Uh, there is pathogen reduction is not as efficient and the nutrient conservation is also not as efficient. So this system, uh, the odor uh, will be eliminated as a source when uh, fecal matter is collected and significant amount of pathogen reduction will be achieved. And also the nutrients will be uh, conserved. Uh, then you have finally you have safe product which have ability to or which when you apply it on soil it will have very beneficial effect. Well the, the main advantage of this type of sanitation is that we don't have any contact to the water cycle. So we don't pollute groundwater, we don't pollute surface waters and uh, this, this alone can save uh, millions of lives every year. So uh, the ultimate uh, goal will be to establish a system like um, a collection system for collecting human excreta at uh, households and to develop a toilet, a suitable toilet as well, suiting for the lactose fermentation process. We need to uh, go to a scale of maybe 100,000 people so that the production of the units, especially the toilet units, uh, but also the installation of small service companies can be done. We are thinking is to establish a service provider, for example, when uh, there is a central uh, si system where this provider will produce these microbes and then provide to the householders. When this uh, material is transported, the idea would be that suction trucks would come and it could be a transportable tank, it could be a pipe that is connected to the toilet that is sucked out that would also even work in multi-story houses. Sanitation is not a purely technical issue. Uh, it is an issue of uh, social interaction, capacity building, uh, but also of uh, economic systems that can be operated at reasonable costs. I am really happy that we found a process that can be included into cheap toilets that could be produced for $50. Operation of such systems, uh, the collection and the composting would also be very cheap. Systems that can be serving the poorest uh, people. Uh, this is also something what has to do a lot with human dignity. We want to develop systems where each of us developers would accept the whole, the whole system in our own houses. Each of us should and does operate toilets in that way and up to now we have found that this is really very very uh, feasible so far. So this, in a nutshell, is uh, what we call terra preta sanitation and uh, this can become uh, the standard sanitation system of the future when it comes to resources recovery and to produce good soil from sanitation. And, of course, we want to protect the water in the best way possible because waterborne sanitation will always pollute water and so we want to get away from that and make toilets that produce highly fertile soil. So this was our overview on the integral system of Terrapeta sanitation. If you are further interested, please click on some of these uh, flickering subjects.